Good evening, everyone. And I'm going to go ahead and call this meeting to order. And this is our second virtual meeting and our regular meeting for the month of April. Um, at this time, I'm going to ask Ms. Anaya to read the Open Public Meetings Act statement, please. On Wednesday, January 8th, 2020, notice of this meeting was sent to the press and the current of Egg Harbor Township. Notice was also delivered that day to the Egg Harbor Township clerk and posted on the bulletin board in Township Hall. Thank you. May we have roll call, please? Mr. Della Barca? Here. And Mr. Ellis? Mrs. Gilbert Floyd? Here. Mr. Price? Mr. Price is here. Mrs. Sullivan? Here. Mrs. Summer? Here. Mrs. Salagi? Mrs. Bird? Present. And Mr. Castellano? Ms. Queens Black. Here. At this time, I'd like to ask us all to please stand and say the Pledge of Allegiance together. I pledge allegiance to the, to flag, the flag of, the United, of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you all very much. Uh, at this time, I'm going to ask Miss Anaya to walk us through some of the mechanics of how a virtual meeting will work. We thank you for your patience as we work through this new virtual board meeting as part of our response to the governor's stay at home executive order number 107. This meeting is streaming live on our website with a 30 second delay. The person speaking will be displayed and public comment will be via telephone. To call in and ask a question or make a comment, please dial 609-653-0100 extension 1417 during the public portion of this meeting. Please do not leave a voicemail message for public comment as it will not be received. Continue to call until you reach the live operator moderator. Due to call volume, this may require you to attempt to call multiple times. Please anticipate a 30 second delay for broadcast to reach stream. Thank you very much and we, we again ask that everyone please bear with us as we work through the technology. Uh, I hope hopefully each week we'll get we'll get a bit better at it. Um, so moving now um, I would like to ask for a motion on the minutes and that would be 2.1 through 2.4. May I have a motion, please? Motion. Second. Motion and a second. Is there any second. discussion on the minutes? Seeing none, may I have a roll call, please? Mr. Della Barca? Yes. Mr. Ellis? Yes. yes. Uh, Mr. Ellis has arrived at the meeting. Thank you. Mrs. Gilbert Floyd. I saw her earlier. Give her a minute. Mrs. Gilbert Floyd, yes. Thank you. Mr. Price. Mr. Price, yes. Mrs. Sullivan. I saw her earlier. I'll come back. Mrs. Summer. Yes. Mrs. Salagi? And Mrs. Bird? Yes. Mr. Castellano? Yes. And back to Mrs. Sullivan. I did see her online earlier. I see what her are we online. voting? Excuse uh, for me, the what minutes. are we voting on? I, my computer went down. We are voting yes. for the minutes. Okay, thank you, Mrs. Uh, um, Sullivan. Okay, thank you everyone. Uh, before I introduce Dr. Gruccio for her superintendent's report, 
Uh, I'd like to take a brief moment, as I did last week, just to say thank you, thank you to our faculty and staff. Thank you for your excellence, thank you for your dedication, and thank you for your hard work. I want to thank Dr. Gruccio and Ms. Anaya for their leadership. I want to thank Mrs. Hauk Elko for her wise counsel to us through all of this. I want to thank board members for working hard and working through all the trials of technology and virtual meetings and everything else we've had to deal with. As I mentioned and said last week, despite difficult times, there is good news here in our district. Our students are learning. We've provided thousands of meals to students who, who need them. We've been providing help and support, Chromebooks, advice and guidance through our, to our students and to our families. And I just wanna take this opportunity again as I did last week. If you need anything and you're watching or listening, if there's anything we can do for you, please contact us and we'll do the best we can to help you. So with that, again, thank you to our faculty and staff. You're doing a great job and I'm gonna turn it over to Dr. Gruccio for her report. Thank you, Mr. Castellano and good evening, everyone. So good to see everyone again and hello out there in virtual land. Uh, thank you for joining us. And usually at this point of our meeting, I leave the dais and I come down on the floor and uh, do a presentation that includes a video. Um, this evening's gonna be a, a little different. Um, at, at this point, um, we cannot share videos through the, this Google Meet. So tonight's report will be adhering to the new normal and making alterations to um, this routine. Um, I'm gonna take a moment to take advantage of some uh, PR right now for our district newsletter. Um, every Monday, we, we release something called a s'mores newsletter. Um, it's released on social media and it's housed under the superintendent's corner on our web page. Um, so here goes. I'm going to attempt now to present. Does everybody see that? Are we seeing that? Yes? Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. So here's what the uh, S'mores newsletter looks like. Well, I open every um, letter with our current reality. And I'm not going to read it to you, but I'm going to just um, highlight what the focus is. And it's just uh, me sending a message to our school community how very proud I am, how everyone has come together um, and has really made virtual learning uh, something that's happened. Um, and, and it's going well. Um, I also stress the focus on being positive and grateful for the wonderful and kind acts um, that folks have done, teachers, administrators, parents. Uh, they include videos and messages and stadium lights. And in these tough times, I realize that sometimes people are anxious and depressed and lonely, but these are gestures that people do uh, to put smiles on, on people's faces and particularly our students. And they are very grateful. Um, for all that has been done, and there's more to come, which I will share. Uh, we've also linked the district website and our banner now that's running. It's a green banner, and it's like one-stop shopping. It'll give you resources um, for parents and the community on grading, Chromebooks, food services, and our staff directory. Then we break down the sections into student achievement, uh, climate and culture, and community pride, just like I do um, when I present in the boardroom. Um, I'm very proud to um, share here our virtual learning schedules, and each day we post one on social media, but here you can collectively see the schedules uh, K to 12. We have a grading update. Uh, also, there, there's a link here for the letter uh, that, I, that was sent out for grading, but it breaks down from PK, four, five, and six through 12, so parents can read that. We also advertise our high school drop ad. It's our second drop ad, and it runs between the time of April 27th and May 1st for our high school students to drop a course or add a course. We um, have information about our advanced placement testing and when that's gonna occur, there's links there for parents and students. 
virtual college exploration. I thought this was really cool. Our guidance department put this together so students, particularly juniors, have the opportunity to, to explore colleges. There's 450 colleges available free for students to learn about. We have our middle school electives. There's a letter to parents and also instructions for parents and students to follow to select their middle school electives for the next school year. Moving to climate and culture. Here again, um, I, I'm, I stress how proud I am about the, the United School family that we have, um, particularly um, our cafeteria staff and our custodians who come out um, a couple times a week to prepare foods, over 10,000 meals this week and on Mondays, um, along with our transportation department and our um, security guards, uh, the food is delivered or distributed. So great job, we appreciate uh, your work, being our essential workers and being there for our students. We also highlight our Pledge of Allegiance. I don't know if you follow this, but you should. Every day on social media, you can see a different family or student or teacher, faculty member who was um, standing proud and saluting the flag and presenting the Pledge of Allegiance to our school community. Be the light for the class of 2020. What a great positive um, move um, that the high school um, administration and um, faculty kind of came from a teacher, teacher's idea presented to the, to the administration. Uh, we, we support that. Again, it's not a time, nor is it um, us promoting um, a gathering. This is just to show our EHT pride and how we are EHT strong for these students and no one here can say that we've experienced a senior year such as this. So let those shine, those lights shine bright for 20 minutes for the class of 2020. Social, emotional, um, and mental health support resources are available. This is very, very important. As I said, people are anxious, depressed, lonely. Um, you know, students uh, may be getting cabin fever. So here's some parent resources of how to talk to their children about the COVID situation and the resources that we provide for assistance. Teacher made videos each week. We will highlight two teacher made videos and every school has made videos for their students. Here's um, a Boston Marathon comes to Egg Hover Township. Our teacher, Stephanie Vandenberg from Davenport Elementary School um, was set to run in the Boston Marathon. As we know, that was postponed. So Stephanie uh, didn't put all that training to waste. Uh, she went out and ran the, those, uh, that marathon, those 26 miles plus um, throughout um, Egg Harbor Township, um, Northfield and uh, surrounding communities. Um, and we're very, very proud of her. Here we have Earth Day celebrates its 50 years this year and Mr. Martyrone um, went to the high school outside and read a story, a story that he reads every year to his students and um, didn't let him down. He did, had that reading outside the high school. Our community partnerships, right here you can find the meal distribution information. Uh, we have our breakfast and lunch programs, our delivery locations, and pickup sites free and reduced meal program information. Um, if your family circumstances have changed uh, due to COVID, uh, you can apply online, just get on our website and the information is there. Also there's support from the Atlanta County Food Bank. Every Hand Together Pursuing Public Health. Uh, this week we feature ch uh, child abuse prevention and you can enjoy a presentation um, by Mr. Santilli and his guest and to assist you and become educated on um, Child Abuse Prevention Month. Right here we talk and we showcase our virtual board meetings. Um, hopefully by now most uh, of you know how to get on. If not, um, information directions here. And uh, hashtag EHT strong as we join together with EHT Parks and Recs and the Mayor's Wellness Campaign and um, um, support the decorating of the home and properties with that EHT pride. Moving on to athletics, um, our Egg Harbor Township 2017 Girls Championship, State Championship softball team not only um, walks pr proud of that championship, but now have been champions of the Atlantic City Press um, uh, best high school team since 2000. And thank you to all the voters who participated in that uh, voting competition. That certainly was a fun time and very proud again of our athletes. They appreciate that. Here I have a message to our student athletes, uh, finding performing arts students a member of the extracurricular clubs to let them know that, you know, we miss them and we understand that they miss us and, you know, our campuses are quiet without them performing and our fans cheering. So I gave them a little, you know, um, 
little talk uh, to, to give them some encouragement to keep on practicing because uh, it's, hopefully it's going to pay off and we're going to get back to school. And we're proud of them. And I'm in tune with their, their uh, Google Classrooms and I can see their practice schedules and how they're responding to their coaches. So I'm very proud. And here we have our athletic trainer who every day provides uh, stretches and um, exercise routines for the athletes so they can stay in shape and out of um, any athletic injuries. And finally, at the end, you'll find our vert weekly digital newsletters from our schools. So if you want to even dig deeper to find out the intricate things that are going on um, in each one of our schools, as well as our gifted and talented program and our libraries and our nursing services, just come on over here, click these links, and uh, that'll take you even further. So I invite you to um, join us in um, traveling through this virtual newsletter. I think it's one-stop shopping and uh, very informative and again, um, aligns to our district learning goals. Okay, Mr. Castellano, that's the superintendent's report. Thank Mr. you very much. Mr. Castellano, it's Barbara Salagi. Apparently the board secretary didn't know if I was here or not, but I'm here and I voted yes for the, the minutes. Oh, very good, good. Thank you and welcome, we're glad you're here. Now, at this point then, I'm gonna thank Dr. Gruccio for that presentation as always, and I think it uh, really reinforced what I had said at the outset you know, thank you to our faculty and staff. Just keep up the great work. You know, I, I couldn't be more proud of you. So we have a treat tonight. And next we're going to hear from our student representatives, uh, Grace and Nick, or Nick and Grace. Sounds like a TV show. Whichever order yeah. we'd like to use are both yeah, like with that. us. <laughs> and we certainly, we're looking forward very much to hearing your perspective on on how things are going. So thank you, thank you very please much. Please take it away yeah, with whatever you'd like to share. Well, I would just like to say uh, hello to everybody, and I hope everyone is uh, all right this evening. Um, before we start, you know, with our report, we reiterate what the what uh, Dr. Guccio had said. Um, you know, we just want to personally thank all of you. You know, the members of the board and other members of the administration, because you know. Uh, we really do understand, you know, this is, you know, these are really unprecedented times, and uh, we, we appreciate the hard work that you're doing because it's it's such a, a scary time and, and, you know, a difficult time, and, you know, you are uh, the beacons of this community. So we do personally thank you for that, members yeah, of I the wanted to administration. Add thank you, and it's a really strange time, and I know I feel that, and I know everyone feels that, and... I can provide little comfort to you guys as much as I would like to comfort the entire community, but I want you to know like I'm constantly thinking of you guys and especially last month it was weird to not be there in person, but I'm hoping for the best for all of you and I do miss seeing you guys in person a lot. So nothing but the best for you guys. Thank you. Um, but anyway, we'll keep the formality brief tonight. Um, so I'm just going to start by reiterating uh, Dr. Gruccio with the um, Be the Light. Uh, the high school began lighting up the stadium on the 22nd from 8 p.m. to 8.20 p.m. Uh, for to honor the class of 2020. And personally, and as many as my classmates have said, um, the recognition is really appreciated uh, as we try to wrap our heads around the entire situation. So thank you. Yeah, in addition to that, you know, um, during all of this, you know, you have the staff and students and they're making videos and they're just trying to keep that positive nature, trying to keep the community in a, and I would argue, a, a mentally healthy state, keeping the hopes, hopes up of not only the younger children, but uh, the, the parents too. And, and the, the virtual classes and, and, and positive videos are really uh, helping with that. To add on, uh, I've enjoyed hearing from my classmates about how um, we're still having virtual learning, but we're also having virtual presenters. So I wrote down some, the MSA classes, Medical Science Academy, they're still having guest speakers. One is Christian Dupree uh, Raglan from Atlantic Care, 
and Michelle D Darkangelo, who is an after call hours nurse, um, as well as the culinary classes who have Shelf Kelly McClay, who is the Dean of School of Culinary Arts at ACCC. So I just think that's incredibly wonderful that we're still having that kind of hands-on experience as much as um, it's not, but it's nice to hear from other people. And I think especially from um, nurses and medical staff right now to hear their personal experiences, I think it's extremely educational and it's a great opportunity for the students. Um, and on a, on a more final note from myself, um... Uh, I just wanted to, and I didn't get the opportunity to, but for all those who do celebrate uh, Passover and Easter, I do know it is, it is uh, quite late, but I hope everyone had a very uh, safe and good holiday there. And in addition, uh, Earth Day was recently, so I hope that had everyone's uh, spirit. So, so um, yes. So that basically is all we wanted to say tonight, just a few positives and not a very positive time. So we just wanted to point out the things that are keeping us going and hopefully you have those things in your life that are keeping you going. So just stay strong and please stay healthy because I would really like to see you all in person again. And I give my best to the community members and everyone watching out there. Um, just stay healthy and our hearts are with you. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you guys both very much. It, it's it's great to see you. It's great to hear from you. Um, of course, you know, we're here for you and all the students. That's why we do this. Um, you're our bridge between the student body and, and the board. And it's just uh, was really um, uh, a treat for me to get to see and hear from you guys again tonight. And uh, it's been a while and we missed you too. And um, uh, I'm so glad that um, the things we're doing in the district uh, are uh, of help, of help to you and hopefully to our students as well. I, I believe they are. So, so thank you again. And uh, please, as always, feel free to chime in as we move through the meeting with any more thoughts that you may have. Um, and it, it, again, it's, it's really great to see you guys and be safe and be well. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank to, you. Uh, you as well. Okay. Um, at this point, we are going to switch gears a little bit, and we are going to begin our 19... Um, rather, we are going to begin... Um, on uh, budget item number five, which is our 2020-2021 budget hearing. Now, what will take place uh, before I um, introduce uh, Dr. Gruccio, uh, I'd just like to mention that we did receive uh, questions from several board members, and I have asked um, Dr. Gruccio and Ms. Anaya to address them through the presentation, and I believe uh, that they will and uh, I think the presentation will be enlightening for everyone so with that uh, we're going to begin our public uh, budget hearing and I'm going to introduce Dr. Gruccio to start off the presentation okay thank you again uh, Mr. Castellano and just as you said in just a moment Ms. Anaya and I will present the 2021 school budget proposal um, but be before we do, I'd like to um, emphasize a few things. Um, I want to emphasize first that we are aware of these unprecedented times. Uh, however, we are also aware of our most precious assets, our students. Our students who need us now more than ever and who, who will really, really need us when we get back to school. This budget provides essential resources for our students, resources needed in order to educate, provide meals, transport to and from school, provide all types of programs, athletics, fine and performing arts, as well as support for educators. All are necessary for our students to be educated in our school district. I wanna take this time to thank all who have contributed to building this budget, from supervisors to our principals and our central office team, 
especially our business administrator, Ms. Chandra Naya, whose financials knowledge is and should be valued. She's worked very hard to match numbers to the resources that are needed and has made them fit into a box in which we have to live. This process is a monumental task and I'd like to review it a little bit. We began last fall budgeting. We held town hall meetings to get our community stakeholders feedback, which is very important to us. We met with supervisors and principals again and again. We took the information and spent many hours as a central office team making it fit. And this included nearly over $6 million worth of cuts made to balance this budget. That was a lot of time and a lot of number crunching, not to mention the anxiety that we felt as we tried to balance the needs of all. We are pleased to present this balanced budget, which is aligned to the Board of Education's approved strategic plan. It's framed around our district learning goals. It's based on data. It's designed to improve student achievement, focus on climate and culture, and it builds upon their community partnerships. This budget meets the needs of the Hague Harbor Township community. This budget listened to school community stakeholders. And it yes, it includes full day kindergarten, resources for our special needs students in order to meet their IEPs, and it provides personnel and other curricular resources. Allow me to add that this budget was presented to the Board of Education in February and again in March. It was approved for submission to the Atlantic County Department of, of Education. It was approved by the Atlantic County Business Administrator and Superintendent as a comprehensive balanced budget that provides a thorough and efficient education to the children of Egg Harbor Township. I will emphasize that we, Egg Harbor Township School District, take our advice from the Atlantic County representatives of the New Jersey Department of Education. They are our governor body when it comes to our school district. And while we are in uncertain times, we are advised to stay the course. Please know that we do not take the struggles of this community lightly. We are here to offer support systems. We have food, technology, and social emotional supports in place. We are presenting tonight a fiscally responsible budget that meets the needs of our Egg Harbor Township School community. And let it be known, at any point, we are advised to reopen an approved budget. We will follow the directive to do so. But I caution you that making any cuts now could put us in a place where we are forced to make cuts on top of the cuts that we would make. And that would certainly be detrimental to our students, staff, and the entire Egg Harbor Township School community. Ms. Sanaya, let's now begin the presentation on the 2021 school budget. Thank you, Dr. Grucci. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen, start the presentation. Okay, so as I'm sharing, so I'm gonna go ahead and start. Um, again, thank you, Dr. Gruccio on the Board of Education um, and the community for participating in this 2020-2021 budget hearing. As Dr. Gruccio mentioned, this has already been approved by the Department of Education and is now being presented by the both of us. I want to thank the board members. You know, serving as a volunteer um, is not an easy job, representing the community of Egg Harbor Township and taking into consideration all stakeholders as they make the decision um, making policies as well as voting on this budget. Um, as Dr. Guccio mentioned, we created this budget with a framework, um, starting with a strategic plan that was established, a three-year plan um, to get the Egg Harbor Township School District uh, moving forward uh, with student achievement and meeting our goals um, in our district. It is available online. From the strategic plan annually, the Board of Education creates goals. Um, and these goals help set the framework um, of the expectation of the board to administration. From the board goals, we create district learning goals to give guidance to our administration to implement um, student achievement and what we have as a focus from the strategic plan, board goals, and these district learning goals. Uh, we mentioned we started the process in the fall. Um, this year we had each and every um, curricular supervisor and department head come and present to the Board of Education, uh, their plans for the future, for the present and the future um, in their specific areas. 
Um, this highlighted um, resources that would be needed, um, goals they are set to achieve to get the students um, more advanced in their area. Then the board had a very hard job. We had to um, present to the board and to the community um, several budget presentations along the way, um, starting with um, just the fundamentals of Budget 101. We called that presentation Budget 1, and that represented budget mandates and things that we knew that we had to fit into this box um, before we even got state aid numbers. Uh, the next meeting was on March 3rd. Um, that was with budget, um, a for balanced budget considering state aid. And from that moment forward up until today, uh, we have constant conversation of what is in that budget and how to best meet our student needs. Um, today is on March 28th and we are having our budget hearing. And the next steps really include um, the submission to the county office, um, their approval and going to um, up to the state. Then the state is gonna be doing uh, their budget work this summer and we are told that the final state aid determination will be on August 25th uh, what that means is we got a preliminary number at the end of February, um, increasing our budget by about $6 million. However, during these times and um, all the things to consider, uh, the community, uh, excuse me, the state um, was then going to be balancing their budget and making um, our state aid final in August. So things may change, and as Dr. Gutierrez had mentioned, if things change between now and then, we are able to then reopen the budget and consider um, a, a new balanced budget. So just a quote here, um, it says, uh, we are investing, excuse me, an investment in knowledge pays the best interest. And that's from Ben Kissing. So how do we invest in knowledge? Basically um, on the screen on your left hand side shows our um, balanced budget, how we got there based on the revenue sources. We have um, revenue sources from state, as our state aid about $54 million. The federal sources is a semi-program of uh, basically reimbursing for uh, Medicaid students um, to um, get services while they're in school. Then we have local source revenue, for example, use of facilities, preschool tuition, as well as um, tuition from other schools and interest payments, as well as um, selling solar. Um, the solar panels we have on our buildings, we get to sell the credits. And then we apply something called excess surplus, and it's $3 million is basically the um, savings from the 2018-19 budget um, goes towards this 2021 budget. And then we have the local levy of $81 million. Um, of that $81 million um, required from the levy, uh, we have um, basically a tax increase of this year about uh, four and a half cents. A tax levy increase, uh, what, that, what does that mean for um, the average taxpayer? Um, well, if you have a $100,000 home, the increase to you would be uh, about $45, uh, which comes out to be um, less than 13 cents a day and less than um, $366 per month. If you have an average of a $200,000 home, it's at, uh, $89 for the year for a $200,000 value home, which is less than 25 cents a day. What that means is the new things that we incorporated into this budget um, with the increase we're recommending, um, it's gonna just cost you guys 25 cents a day and you will see the value of that investment in a very little bit. So the ability, this is basically forward thinking philosophy, the ability to sit in the shade now means someone planted a seed a long time ago. So we're planting seeds now for the investment in our future. And that is our value proposition. Just in case you didn't know, it was our value proposition. <laughs> current enrollment, this budget is based on current students in district um, of 7,300 students. We do have about 500 students, four to 500 students that are out of district, going to, at um, ACIT, charter schools, um, as well as um, special ed placement, things like that. Um, the money that you invested in basically covers our existing programs for those students um, listed on this screen. Um, it basically, this budget is keeping what we already have and then expanding into additional things that we'll be discussing. So as you can see, we do offer quite a bit um, with our investment. But here is what's new. Um, we did have, um, as Dr. Gruccio mentioned, this budget does include full day kindergarten. Um, there are some additional staff um, needed and as well as the benefit costs. And then the, we also expanded our curricular resources in order to meet our district needs. And I will now turn it over to Dr. Gruccio. OK, 
Okay, thank you. Uh, I want to spend some time here on one of our biggest uh, initiatives of full day kindergarten um, and how this was a collaborative effort um, to um, you know, work through this whole process. It began with research in the fall, listening to stakeholders, um, hearing the support um, from parents, teachers, um, or, or um, EHT, EA, and um, we, we soared, soared forward um, in the research. Um, at the turn of the year, uh, we presented to the board and asked for their um, opinion. Do we want to move forward um, or, you know, or not? And we were given the, the green light to move forward with the research. So I just want to share, um, as Chandra, as you could go to the next slide, um, some of the research. Okay, um, Chandra spoke of the value propositions. So the implementation of full day kindergarten uh, in our school district will provide students, parents, teachers, and the district and the community with various opportunities, academic abilities for students, uh, social emotional uh, opportunities, parents who work out so outside their home uh, now have better support for their students um, by eliminating that half day disruption to their to their world. Um, teachers have now have additional time to develop um, stronger student relationships, and which is very critical for the development of the whole child. And the district now um, is, can be geographically compared um, in the um, in the market to attract new families, and it it also allows for our preschool expansion funding, um, which uh, you know we have heard we cannot apply for that grant unless we have full day kindergarten. Um, in the community, it will be provided opportunities to continue to prosper in a diverse and complementary community in which we are. Next. The benefits of full day kindergarten, um, this was shared um, in our stakeholder meetings, but in case you uh, weren't there to join us and uh, you're new to this information, I'd be glad to quickly share that uh, full day kindergarten is beneficial. Um, uh, educators definitely know that. Um, children who experience full day classes have greater reading and math achievement gains. Um, research has demonstrated um, that these early education programs produce a three to one return on the investment, which means is that you, you eliminate future costs that are related to remediation or retention um, or special services programs that um, have to be put in place for students um, who are behind. Um, full day kindergarten also shows an increase in academic learning time as it prepares for the mastery of first grade reading and writing um, and math skills. And we hear from our teachers that our students um, coming to them um, need some more time in these areas. Um, the development of skills that support the social um, and emotional and problem solving skills um, can all be uh, learned in kindergarten. Also, uh, research tells us that higher test scores, um, particularly in reading in the early grades are seen with full day kindergarten, uh, fewer retention, higher achievement for the disadvantaged and low income student as they are receiving um, those Title I, and those are, who are receiving Title I services, but the full day kindergarten embraces uh, their needs and gets them on the track they need to be on. This longer day provides for more curricular consistency uh, for our district by allowing more time spent in individualized instruction, greater progress for social school skills um, for all our students, higher self-esteem and independence is, is built, expanded innovation and creative opportunities through stream lessons. And we, we, we plan to start that at, in the kindergarten level. Um, right now with the half day, we touch upon it, but there isn't uh, the time to really dive into it. Um, students also will have that access to the nutritional breakfast and lunch. And overall, it's more relaxed, less hurry school day um, that offers varied experiences for our students that they truly deserve. From a teacher's perspective, and this comes from the National Education Association, um, and there's different quotes here, but the full day kindergarten eases that transition into first grade. The longer school day offers flexibility to do more activities and, and get more of a full curriculum. Uh, by participating in full day schedule, it allows appropriate challenges for children um, at all developmental ages, and particularly with the delays of at risk um, kids as they're experiencing some possible problems. Um, it assists with them and getting them again on track for that first grade. Having more time made child assessment and college record keeping, or so I'm sorry, classroom record keeping more manageable for teachers. And finally, switching to full day kindergarten gives teachers more time for curriculum planning, incorporating that greater number of thematic units and offers more in-depth coverage of those curricular units. 
So um, demographic data here, just to share a little bit of data. Um, almost half of our students qualify for free and reduced lunch. So students who are eligible to, for this free and reduced lunch program are often less likely to have access to preschool and kindergarten programs. And, and this was data that you know really opened our eyes um, because um, we feel that our students should have access to those early educational opportunities um, so that they are not set off um, to start off behind and that they're, they're on the track that they need to be on track um, the track that they're supposed to be on. Um, students or children these days are, are in school at the ages of three and four, full day learning experience. Come take a bunch of kindergarten, it's half day experience and they're back to a full day experience. So we'd like to keep that continuity with that full day educational experience. Chandra? Okay, I'm hoping you can hear me. I just unmuted a different way. All right, I'm gonna start talking. Um, so, go ahead. Okay. Oh. All right, this is just some um, sample uh, work for um, a half day program versus a full day program. Um, it's student work. And um, this is what we're saying. This isn't to, to make fun or bash anything. This just shows you a difference. When you have more time in a program, um, you go from, um, letters and the attempt to create words that you hear to full sentences. Next. So our financials. Now I want to start at the bottom here because in the fall when we dove into this project we presented an estimated cost of about 2.8 million and that was just ballpark. But when the board gave us the go ahead to dive deeper in this research we were able to take a laser light focus on, on staff and look at efficiencies and, and, and condense uh, different areas. So we come up with staff, we have curriculum needs, we you know, beg, borrow and steal from, from wherever we could to see what we can supply kindergarten with. And that includes facilities and furniture and classroom needs. So when we budgeted and we sharpened our pencil, the total is now 1.5. So there's a lot of savings in there by doing the research and sitting in the conference room and doing a lot of work um, on this topic. <clears throat> Along uh, with the full day kindergarten staff protect, uh, projection, there's uh, some additions here. So in the fall, it looked like we needed 12 additional uh, certified classroom teachers. Um, we now need four. And that was looking and um, working on efficiency. Uh, three, I, the R teachers are needed two health and PE teachers, um, two specials teachers full-time, and two special teachers part-time <clears throat> are needed um, so that we can implement full-day kindergarten. And that's meeting um, IEP needs as well. But, so here's a quote, a, a quote, attempting to repair reading skills in fourth grade is far more expensive and risky than guaranteeing good reading skills in kindergarten. And how true that is, um, why wait three, four years when the problem has escalated and grown, when we can um, work on it and deal with it at the kindergarten level, give kids what they need, assess kids, see what their, um, their needs are, if they need any remediation or um, differentiate instruction, that happens at the, in the lower early learning uh, grades such as kindergarten. Moving on to um, other um, components of our budget, the new district staff positions are needed for continuing our support services. And um, our special ed department um, was put the task to find efficiencies, uh, but also to look at their data and look at their needs in meeting um, our students and their IEPs, which as you know is um, um, something we follow. It's a legal document and um, it's for um, the betterment of the child. So we have positions here from um, ICR, LCR uh, uh, educators, the behavior specialist, occupational therapist, <clears throat> speech therapist, physical therapist, a director of special ed, um, moving a current supervisor from 10 to 12 months, and then we have security guards to, to adhere to our safety and security initiative and um, an additional um, position that moves from part-time to full-time for our station manager. And boy, do we know we need that, being in this virtual world and communicating with the world um, through um, our TV station and our social media. 
Um, it is 24 seven and those folks are doing a great job and shout out to them for doing what you're doing now. Thank you. And three, curricular resources. We have um, a creative curriculum um, edition update. This is for our um, kindergarten program um, as it um, is a program that has to do with creative play um, and creative uh, curriculum for preschool and it's teaching early learning through discovery and creativity. Um, our XIL math pilot for grades fifth and sixth for math intervention. Uh, we have need to update our AP social studies text, um, our science stream <clears throat> lab supplies, um, our, our need, lots, lots of innovation going on at the middle school, and our Fontas and Pinnell classroom for K-2 instructional supplies. This is, this is needed so we can be fully aligned to our K-12 um, ELA curriculum and help support teachers with implementing all our strategic plan points for student achievement. Um, <clears throat> IMAX are needed for the Khan Academy. We cannot load them with any new um, programs because they're that old. They're over 10 years old and they will not take any of the new programs. Um, our CTA program is advancing um, into aviation, robotics, computer programming, and that is a part of the middle school elective um, process. Your parents will see that on there. Updated health instructional materials for K to five. And finally, our ELL program um, in their WIDA assessment <coughs> online um, needs some assistance um, to broaden that resource. And what do we have next there? So before um, Ms. Anaya um, takes over, I just want to stress that, in, as you know, we are a proud Egg Harbor Township School District where every hand together, we're about every child every day, and we will embrace these challenges. Uh, we will engage in what needs to be done, and I promise you, we will continue to educate our children. So being hashtag EHT strong, um, I hope um, that what was presented thus far makes sense, um, answers questions, and allows you to see um, that um, a lot of work went into this um, that's aligned to the district learning goals and uh, for our precious uh, assets, our students of Egg Harbor Township. Chandra. Unmute. Excuse me, Chandra, can you unmute? I was told I was muted. Somebody muted me, so sorry about that. I didn't realize that happened. Yeah. I used my keyboard. <laughs> okay, so can we use savings um, for this year's budget um, for the budget being presented was one of the questions. Um, in a nutshell, yes, there are some identified savings that we are able to see um, knowing, okay, we won't be running buses, you know, for March and April, um, beginning of May. Um, spring sports at least missed half their season. There are some utility savings and some instructional supplies from the budget freeze in the fall. Um, that is all based on, you know, what can change if school reopens. Those numbers are very, um, very much unknown. Um, the biggest piece is the year is not over. Uh, we won't know until the summer um, audit of 2020 how much we will have in true savings for this year's budget. Um, and then after that, it's actually put towards the 2022 budget. Um, so some of the other factors, you know, if we return to school from social distancing, um, some part of the unknowns has to do with an alternate schedule that's been floating around. Um, we will need additional food service staff. We may need additional transportation costs um, that aren't not expected as well as additional staff. Um, compensatory services is a reality, you know, PPE expenses for staff and students, you know, are we going to wear masks when we come back? Um, nursing and medical staff and technology, cleaning and sanitizing that may be needed. Um, those are all unknowns at this point if we have to come back to school this year. Also, a bigger concern is, you know, we are self-funded. Uh, right now, there's um, a legislature out there about being fur about furloughs going on in governments, whether it's police or teachers and a government has been speaking on it. Um, if that recommendation does go through, um, we could see a spike in unemployment claims. Well, our unemployment fund is self-funded. Um, that's an unknown amount that that impact would have. 
as well as COVID claims could spike um, for our staff or members of our census, which is anybody who has insurance for our school, um, because we are self-funded with our health insurance as well. It's a little scary. Um, and basically that answers that piece of that question. Um, basically, what we have on this agenda <laughs> is the board resolution, um, basically recapping everything that um, Dr. Gruccio said. Um, and you know, families do stand at the center of our society and every family has a personal stake in um, promoting or prompting excellence in education, excuse me. And that is from Ronald Reagan. Um, this budget being proposed is actually um, on this agenda. I really just wanna close out by thanking everybody in the business office and um, central administration. Um, Dr. Gruccio did mention the principals and supervisors, program directors, and really the community, all of the community members that did come out for our stakeholder meetings in the fall um, your insight was valued, and we do appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Lanaya. Uh, Mr. Castellano, that is our 2021 budget presentation, and I turn the screen over to you. Thank you, Dr. Gruccio, Ms. Anaya, uh, for a fantastic presentation. Um, comprehensive. Uh, enlightening and uh, inspiring. And I appreciate all of your efforts very much, um, and we all do. At this point in the meeting, what we're going to do is we're going to open uh, up for first public comment on the budget only. So we will open for public comment on the budget only followed by board member comment on the budget only, and then we will move into comment on other portions of the agenda. So again, this will be public comment on the budget, please. There is a 30 second delay, so we are gonna wait for this to hit the live stream, and then we can anticipate the phone to ring. So we will leave this message up as instructions. Once we have the calls coming in, and the last call comes in, we will wait a complete minute to make sure there's no other calls coming in. Name and address, please. Uh, it's me again, Chandra. It's name and address. You're now in queue. Go ahead. You're on live stream. Katarina Bethel, 115 Winnipeg Avenue. Go ahead with your comment. Hello. Um, I am calling to um, ask the Board of Education to reevaluate the goals and priorities of this budget based on the needs of the community right now, the needs of the COVID-19 um, issues, and um, I want to discuss the cut in August when uh, state aid figures will undoubtedly be reduced, um, especially if the new aid coming in is $6 million. Um, I think it's a little disingenuous to um, say that you've been to all these presentations through September and January and February when um, COVID wasn't even an issue in January and February here in Ann Harbor Township. Even Stockton University has reevaluated their goals and priorities and have put off an expansion. I'm not going to argue the benefits of full day kindergarten, but what I'm saying is now is not the time. If you cannot tell the community on August 28th that you can't do full day kindergarten. And I wanna know where you have the 1.5 million to do it if state aid does get cut. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Bechtel for your comment. 
greatly appreciated. Okay, name and address, please. Uh, my name is Jim Burr, uh, 305 Arrowhead Drive in Maytubble County. Go ahead with your comment. Okay, um, first of all, um, I'd like to uh, quickly thank the uh, uh, Dr. Guccio, her staff, um, Board of Education, and uh, particularly our, our business administrator, uh, Chandra Anaya, uh, for all the support and, and things they've done for our children and our families. Um, I'm sure all the board members obviously are aware of, uh, of, of the educational community's um, point of view in terms of the value of full day kindergarten. Obviously tonight's research and information helps push that. Um, as this, this effort reverberates from grades one through 12 in terms of getting full day kindergarten into our school and it will positively affect our children, family and the community. As we know, the implementation of full-day kindergarten is the number one priority of our families as identified through many meetings and information sessions, strategic planning meetings, our special board meetings. Um, quite a bit of time has been uh, invested in uh, identifying this important need. Um, and my comment is basically uh, your follow-through tonight, uh, the Board of Education uh, will show your commitment to the education and the welfare of our children that you listen in uh, to your constituency. As Mrs. Wozen said at the last meeting, uh, who was the head of the Teachers Association, as we all know, uh, we need to complete the circle of trust and pass full day kindergarten. Um, and there's never been, uh, you know, a better time, even in, in these unusual circumstances, to invest community resources in our children. This is the time to make that difference. Financially, um, as uh, Mrs. and I had pointed out, uh, this makes uh, a lot of sense in terms of certainly going to cap on this, on this budget vote, um, which will, uh, um, without doing that, would lock our losses into perpetuity, but also um, the uh, reasonable cost of this full-day kindergarten program, and particularly the fact that we will be getting funding back, especially in the special area of special education, uh, preschool education, excuse me, uh, for investing in full-day kindergarten. Um, I encourage the board members that they're making history tonight um, with full-day kindergarten, this will benefit not only our children, their families, and will elevate our school system to a new, higher level of effectiveness. Um, the board will always be remembered for this vote tonight, of course. And uh, again, we want to complete the circle and vote yes on full day kindergarten. Our egg harbor detention families are watching. And I, I'm just saying I'm very confident that the board will make the right decision and vote for budget and, of course, uh, the full day kindergarten program. And we'll affirm all our efforts over the past three years. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for your comment, sir. There were several calls during that call, so I will wait for the next one to come in. Okay, name and address, please. My name is Terry Alabarda, and my address is 206 Westwood Road, Mike Barber Township. Go ahead with your comment. Thank you. I'm calling tonight to support the budget, and throughout the years I have heard um, all the, the people of Egg Harbor Township say that we need full day kindergarten. And now that you know, we've heard from the community, we have it set up. We really need to support it at this point. And I know that our future is unknown right now, but with the breakdown, it's only a few dollars a day, or actually a month, 
for a house that's even worth $200,000. It's something that will save us money in the long run because we won't have as many tier two and tier three interventions as we would if we don't have full day kindergarten. And I also want to add in that um, we need to keep as much funding for the arts open too because a lot of the students, they um, aren't sports, aren't into sports and even the kids that are, that with the uncertainty that we have right now, the, the kids use music as an outlet. And I was lucky enough to go on the trip up to New York recently uh, before everything happened and the judges, she, they said what a wonderful program we have at Harvard Township and that they do not usually hear students that are so good from middle school level. So um, I'm asking for support for the budget that it should pass and um, thank you so much. Thank you. <clears throat> thank you for your comment. Okay, you are on stream. Name and address, please. Hi, Suzanne Griffin, 232 Heathercroft, CHT. I'm going to keep it simple. I just really want to say I hope that you guys support this budget um, and the full day kindergarten. As a parent, I see the difference of what <clears throat> half day versus full day does for the kids. They don't all get to go to preschool. And two hours is not enough to learn what is expected in kindergarten. So please, please consider adopting this budget. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Okay, go ahead. Name and address, please. Uh, Kathy Watson. Uh, I'm calling in to express my strong uh, concern that the board vote in favor of this budget. Um, I do listen to the township residents, and I know everyone hears right now, but even August, uh, the date in August when the governor is to give us our aid is unknown. Uh, that is an unknown. You have to mute your television, Kathy. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'm trying to I'm trying to mute it right now, but uh, all right, I'm going to try. I'm not going to be able to hear if you can hear me. Um, so I, I'm really asking you to take this deep and vote this budget in and make history for Egg Harbor Township and for the residents and our our children that are coming into kindergarten to give them the opportunity to have all the benefits that a full day kindergarten afford them. But full day kindergarten is only one part of this budget. The rest of the budget has been hard fought for and worked at strive to get to where we're at. So let's not lose sight of that. And I know the board's going to do the right thing. So um, I'm going to be listening and I hope I get it. I hope I get back to cheer you on. Thank you. And we thank you. Thank you for your comment.
Okay, go ahead, name and address, please. Hi, my name is... Go ahead, you can do your name. Go ahead. I'm sure you can hear me. Melissa Lucas, I'm a first grade teacher at Davenport in the district. And go ahead with your comment. Yeah, hi, I taught kindergarten um, for 13 years, half day, at Davenport, and now I'm currently teaching first grade for my second year. And pretty much, I just want to say that the half-day program does not allow enough time to require for their curriculum to be effectively taught and to get them ready for fifth grade. And I see that now more than ever as a first grade teacher. Full day is needed now, so please vote to pass full day kindergarten. Thank you. Thank you very much for your comment. Okay, name and address, please. Jill Miller, uh, 206 Westwood Road. And go ahead with your public comment. And I just wanted, okay, I just wanted to say that um, I do not have children in the school district, but I do recommend that um, you put through this budget. It will help families starting out with young children um, so that they don't have to pay the extra daycare. Uh, it will really help the children of our future um, and in our community. So I totally recommend uh, passing this budget. Um, I also like to go listen to the um, performances and the plays. So um, any money that you can put towards the arts as well is uh, definitely appreciated. It's, it's wonderful to hear these kids um, become really good uh, members of the community. Thank you. And we thank you. Thank you for your comment. Chandra. We have to wait at least 30 seconds or a minute to make sure there's no other public comment. At this time, we are just in hold, holding pattern. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chandra. At this time, we are waiting another 30 seconds just to be sure there are no other public comments. Now that they have the sign up, we will wait about 30 seconds. Thank you. Maybe a minute. Okay, name and address, please. Sure, my name is Mark Tedeschi, 148 Blackman Road, Egg Harbor Township. Go ahead with your comment. Um, I'm actually, I am familiar with the district and uh, the people and the places, but I'm calling as the parent of a first grade special education student at the moment. I'd like to wear that hat when I speak to you. And, um, Having a little bit of an inside and an outside view, from the last two years for my son's reading recovery, uh, two in-class support teachers 
uh, focusing primarily on him, probably spent about two or their day of their class time um, with pull out instruction, uh, with the semester assistant, doing everything that, that we asked them to do, and we saw great results and continue to see great results. Um, I just took an average salary of a uh, teacher in the district, and I added in the cost of benefits and did a little bit of uh, approximation. Please don't hold me to the penny, uh, Ms. Anaya. But the, the money spent on reading recovery for my son since he entered in kindergarten has amounted to probably around $40,000 when I look at the salaries of his in-class support teachers through there. And when one penny of the tax rate generates about 400000 is that correct? I, I don't want to make an inaccurate comment. Continue with your public comment. Go ahead. Uh, okay. <laughs> that, you know, that's just one. That's just one child uh, coming in uh, with a reading issue that generates, uh, you know, that eat, it eats up, for lack of a better word, a tenth of a penny for every cent on the tax rate. And there's definitely more out there. So I do think that we can realize some savings uh, by giving them more than the 40, 50 minutes they get during half-day kindergarten towards our literacy goals. And uh, I obviously, for that and many other reasons support this budget and hope that our representatives on the board do the same thing. Stay safe, everybody, and uh, thank you of all of you. Take care. We thank you very much for your comment and your comments. Okay, name and address, please. My uh, address is 45 Orchard Boulevard, Egg Harbor Township. Um, I'm calling to give my comment that I fully support the full day kindergarten program. Um, I do have a young child who is uh, potentially going to go to the kindergarten program um, starting this fall, so I am very much personally invested in this. Um, other than that, I think um, it all the Egg Harbor Township provide a very good curriculum which all the students are um, uh, designed to benefit from, um, especially our kindergartners because um, you know, our school has many resources and facilities for them. Um, I think it is essential for the kids in our township um, to get, get that equal platform because um, some kids do not um, get the chance to go to preschool, so I just want to give my full support to, um, to the full day program. Thank you. We thank you very much for your comments. Okay, name and address, please. Dr. Nataki Chestnut, 307 Island Lane, A. Harbor Township. And go ahead with your public comment. Yes, I'm calling to um, support um, the budget for the 2021 school year as well as our school day kindergarten. 
I think that as a community and, and as a society as a whole, we need to um, look outside of our house to see what will benefit, you know, the greater good um, of our community. Um, just to let everyone know, there is no direct benefit for me or my household um, for a KG program because our daughter is actually a junior at the high school this year. And we pay over $13,000 in property taxes. So if it means that my property tax, you know, needs to go up a little, you know, to make sure that the students in our community are better equipped for the future, then so be it. Um, I'll, you know, I'll rather see that. And then, you know, the district is also looking at developing, you know, students so they can compete globally. And in order for our students to do that, we have to make sure that not only we have a full day kindergarten program, but we also have a pre-K program. Because we all know that our students need those, you know, those strong foundational skills um, to be fully, you know, developed and equipped to be global, you know, learners. With, with my own daughter, I want her to be able to get the best education in PhD, where she can compete globally with the students and children of Finland, South Korea, you know, in Denmark. So I do support, um, you know, the kindergarten program and hope that the board does um, approve it. Thank you. And thank you very much for your comments. Okay, name and address, please. Whitney Vernon, Two Timberwood Drive. Go ahead with your public comment. Um, I just wanted to call in to say that I fully support full day kindergarten. Um, I actually have two children in the school district, one being in first grade and two kindergarten last year for half day. I personally don't think that there was enough time in the day to really teach the five and six year olds in two hours. So I just wanted to say that I fully support it because I've seen a huge difference in my seven year old now that she's in first grade. And I think the more time would definitely benefit them to go into first grade. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We thank you for your comments. And there were a few calls, so we're just going to hold the line for now. Okay, repeat name and address, please. Christina Hampton, teacher at Davenport School. Go ahead with your public comment. Hi, I'm just calling in as a teacher in the district. I've been working in the district 13 years, and I'm currently a first grade teacher. I'm asking you to strongly, I'm strongly encouraging you to support this budget. This budget is an investment in our students and our community, and we can no longer afford the loss of instructional time that a half-day program costs us. As a first-grade teacher, I've seen firsthand the difference in the level of preparedness from students coming from full-day programs, and approving this budget will allow us to finally have that edge that all of our students need. So please support the budget. Thank you. Thank you. 
We thank you very much for your comments. Okay, name and address, please. You're live. Mary Geary, my address is 117 Poplar Avenue. I have put seven special ed children through the district. I have had to retain three of them um, in the district. One in first grade, one in sixth grade, one, two in first grade. And the need for the full day kindergarten probably would have negated two of those because of the ability to enhance the reading and math projects. I also have two that are being sent out of district. So the ability to provide full day kindergarten in district is a necessary issue now and waiting to see what the fall would come would just potentially put off what we could provide now. So I beg the district board of ed to pass the budget now. Thank you. Thank you. We thank you for your comments. Thank you very much. Okay, we did have a call during that last one, but we're just gonna wait um, another 20 seconds or so and then we can call it, I'll let you know. I had a caller and I disconnected um, by accident. So we are gonna wait a few minutes, uh, at least another couple seconds, let him call back, please hold. Okay, name and address, please. You're live. Sean Finnegan, 10 Cottage Road. And go ahead with your public comment. Uh, yeah, I guess, I mean, first off, I, I have two, two 
two children that are younger, and um, I've sent them both to full-day kindergarten so I can understand the the, the benefits because I see it in them every day. But I just think that you kind of need to do a reality check here. I mean, I feel like I'm in some sort of bizarre world, and I hear a lot of teachers calling, but just a little bit of perspective. You know, teachers are currently getting paid. Teachers currently aren't unemployed. Um, they still have their jobs, but the people I talk to around town, they've lost their jobs. They can't get unemployment. They haven't gotten a stimulus check. Uh, and here we are, we just pushed uh, one cent tax on them by the district. And now we're talking about putting another $166 on them per, per 200K. So yes, I can understand the benefits, but does it make any sense to do this now? And like I said last week, we can't, we don't even have a plan to onboard our students. Now we're gonna take 500 kids that were there part-time and we're gonna have to try to manage them through the school system full-time when we're dealing with a situation like a pandemic where we're gonna be talking about things like uh, personal hygiene and wearing masks and taking temperatures of children every day, full PPE for some of our at-risk staff. So I just don't think the town in general understands the impact of what we're asking. And, and it doesn't make sense to me that we're doing this now. Like I said, I understand the premise, I agree with it, but now is not the time to put this on a town to the tune of 20, 30% unemployment. It just does not make sense. People lost their jobs, people can't get any money, and we're dumping money, $3 million a year, on top of that. It just doesn't make any sense this year. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much for your comments. Okay, please name and address for the record. You're on, you are live. Um, my name is Marianne Rabarczyk, 115 West Kennedy Drive. I am calling to say I would love to have a full-day kindergarten. My child will be going to kindergarten next year. I also have a fourth grader and a third grader. Full-day kindergarten would be great for the kids, especially with the curriculum that New Jersey pushes on them. Um, it gives them more time to learn it as well as still have hands-on learning, recess as well, and also there are other specials they get to enjoy, gym, music, art, just like the rest of the kids. I think it would be a great opportunity for the kindergartners. That's it. Thank you. Thank you very much for your comments. We will wait another 20 seconds or so, and then we can uh, close this public comment section.
Okay, name and address, you're live. Uh, Jennifer Meyer, kindergarten teacher at Davenport. Um, I'm just calling in tonight to, again, urge you uh, board members to please uh, vote for this budget. Um, we really do need a uh, full day kindergarten to let our children grow and get the experience they need with the curriculum that's currently in place, um, along, along with supporting all the other aspects of the budget. Thank you. And uh, we thank you as well for your comments. We have another 20 seconds or so, and then we can close this public comment if no other calls come in. Please, you. please repeat your name and address, please. Go ahead with your public comment. Yes, hi. Um, I am a parent in the district of 15-year-old twins in high school, and I am also a first grade teacher. And I'm just calling in to ask everyone to support um, the budget for tonight. Um, I see firsthand as a first grade teacher how important it is and the deficit that it's felt for kids coming from a half-day program. So I'm just calling in to show my support. Okay, thank you. Thank you. We thank you for your comments. Thanks. Go ahead, name and address, please. You're live. Uh, my name is Ryan Matricardi, 423 Pine Avenue in Eckover Township. Um, I'd just like to say that I've been a resident in Eckover Township my entire life, um, as well as my wife and my children are going through the school district, and uh, we are in support of the full day kindergarten. It is uh, 2020, time that Eckover Township rises to the occasion and uh, joins everyone else. Thanks, guys. Thank you very much. We thank you for your comments. At this time, it has been 45 seconds uh, with no public comment.
I believe by the time I finish talking will be a full minute and you can go ahead and proceed. Mr. President, enough time has passed over a minute. If this time you want to close public comment for a budget hearing, you may do so. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chandra. So we will close public comment on the budget um, portion, uh, the budget portion of the hearing, and I'll now open it to board member questions or comments on the budget. Mr. President, may I speak? Marita. Yes, please. Okay. First of all, I want to make it really clear that the whole entire board has worked really, really hard, um, not only on the budget, but also on full day kindergarten. And this is not just about full day kindergarten. This is about a burden put on our taxpayers right now, which um, for those that, for small businesses, for uh, the regular workers, that this is going to be a real burden for them to raise the taxes for this. Uh, my questions are, um, will we, First of all, if and when will we get the funding? Will we will we be able to have um, full time classes, or are we going to go back? And there's been rumors of split sessions to keep children distant from each other. Are we going to be able to implement that? Um, also, if uh, the budget comes in or if the funding comes in lower in August, we're going to have parents scrambling to figure out what to do with their children. This is not just about this is not at all about cutting kindergarten. This is about looking at our budget again now while we have the time, uh, reworking it, hopefully keeping full kindergarten in there. And then when it comes down to August and we find out what our actual money is, hopefully um, we won't have to cut too many things. Uh, if it doesn't come to full kindergarten being cut, cutted, we may have academies, we may have work workshops, not workshops, but other things that are going to uh, affect the other children in the district. So there's a whole lot of variables here right now, and I think they need to be addressed, and we need a little bit more time on this budget. There's no one, again, everyone on the board is for full day kindergarten. We've been to all the meetings. We've heard the public. This is about making our budget affordable for all of our constituents and getting the most bang out of our bucks for all the students in our district. That's our biggest concern is the education of our students. So if there are other creative ways that we can save, full day kindergarten may be able to be saved. So it's not about full day kindergarten and that's what all the um, calls were about. It's more about let's look at this now, let's make a plan B so if our funding comes in lower in, um, in August that we already have a plan ready. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sullivan. Uh, are there other board members? Yes, Mr. Castellano, it's Barbara Salagi. Yes, Barbara, please. Yes, I have um, some great concerns. Obviously, what Marita just said, we are all for all day kindergarten. There's no arguing about the benefits of it. But um, we have we have some a lot of unknowns. Uh, a couple times it was mentioned vote for this because we, you'll make history. We're already making history right now through this pandemic. And it, it, I don't think it would be fair to have parents that are assuming that we're going to have full day kindergarten and then find out that they took our surplus, they decreased our aid, and then we can't afford full day kindergarten on August 25th. That's, that's a big concern that I have. The other concern that I have is we were told that full day kindergarten would increase first, second, third, and fourth grade class sizes. So we have children that are home now. Some are probably doing what they're supposed to be doing every day. Some don't have maybe the support to be doing what they're supposed to be doing. So we're going to have a lot of students, I anticipate, um, that are going to need extra help and if we are in school they're going to be in a larger class and the teachers are going to have more students to try and bring up to where they should be um, I did 
the fact that we were going to, we're calling it all day kindergarten if we go into split sessions. It could be half a day anyway. So there's, there's a lot of unknowns there and it's really hard to make a decision based on unknowns. Um, a lot of people that are making paychecks right now are publicly funded paychecks. And even though we heard from people over the phone tonight that want full day kindergarten, I've been hearing from people that they're not working, they haven't collected unemployment in two months, they didn't get their stimulus yet, and they're, they're in trouble. So I just have to uh, verbalize my concerns because I think they're very valid. Thanks. Thank you, Mrs. Salagi. Other board members? Uh, yes, Mr. Castellano. Yes, Mrs. Bird, please. Um, I agree that we are obviously in times that um, we are newly navigating times that we are un that are uncertain and uh the fear of the unknown is scary and i think that every single board member up here feels that i think the teachers feel that i think our students feel that um it's been a very long process and i've lamented back and forth on what is the right thing to do and so rather than make a decision based off of my emotions or my fears, I decided to look into what the research tells us. So I found a study from Ohio University and Emory University where postgraduate students studied school districts, tax um, referenda, spending cuts, and its effect on student achievement. Um, and I'm going to read just a blurb from that because like I said, I don't want to make tonight's decision based on emotion or fear, but more on um, data. So Ohio's, uh, this was done in Ohio, Ohio's heavy reliance on local tax measures, similar to here, um, fund public schools enabled us to identify the impact using a sample of districts that is representative of districts throughout the country in terms of the reliance on local sources of revenue spending per pupil and demographic characteristics. The results indicate that levy failure led to large relative declines in district revenues and expenditures per pupil and ultimately the declines in student and ultimately declines in student achievement. Further analysis reveals that the relative cuts to instrumental spending corresponded to teacher attrition concentrated among teachers with four years of experience or less, as well as increase in student teacher ratios. Additionally, the cuts to other district services correspond to lower student attendance rates, which is consistent with the possibility that cuts to services such as transportation funding also affected the ability of districts to educate students. So basically not having um, those levies passed led to immediate and trackable lack of student achievement. And I have one more, it's not quite as long. This was done at more locally, University of Pennsylvania and Penn State University. Um, it was a study based on our most recent recession and it was done in 2017. So this is based on uh, troubling economic times and its uh, impact on student achievement. The impact of the Great Recession on student achievement um, the results reveal that the achievement trajectories for, for particular segments of the school population were substantially attenuated by the Great Recession. The impact of the recession on disadvantaged subgroups, upwards of 0 0.05 standard deviations for each school age of exposure to the recession was larger than the effects of known educational interventions. So it also says that um, just the a minimal cut to um, school aid had long-term lasting negative implications that far outla outlasted the economic um, setbacks. So this is a very emotional time and we could rely on our emotions. We could rely on our fears or we could have faith in our administration 
and we could have faith in our business administrator and we could have faith in our community that through these tough times, we still make the right decisions for our kids. And I have one more comment. I apologize for taking so long. Um, one of the calls in said that, um, and I might have misheard, but um, they question why we would be adding, say, 500 more students into our uh, population. And I see that as um, we educate 7,400 students a day in Ag Harbor Township. Adding 500 is 6%. Our teachers can take it. Our principals can take it. Our administrators can take it. We're here to educate. Bring on the numbers. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Bird. Do we have other board members? Yeah, Pete, uh, can I say something? It's Amy. Yes, yes Amy, please. Go ahead. I just wanted to um, thank Dr. Gruccio and uh, Mrs. Anaya and administration for working so hard on the budget. I know that it was a long, tiring process. I know that the future is uncertain. Um, I also know being a first grade teacher how necessary full day kindergarten is. Um, if we don't pass this budget, I'm also worried about the implications of our preschool funding. Um, so I 100% support passing this budget. Thank you. Um, thank you, Mrs. Summer. Uh, any other board members? Mrs. Any other board? Yes, yes. Ms. Okay. Floyd, please. Um, so I just wanted to say there were there were about between 13 and 14 uh, stakeholders that called in tonight. Um, and I believe two to three um, did share their um, that they did not want to support the budget. Well, they didn't say the budget. I think the the, the key things they pointed out was full day kindergarten, <clears throat> and I know that's not represent doesn't represent the entire um, population of a carpet township or stakeholders. But there were just some, um, I guess, comments that kind of stood out to me, and I, it kind of sparked some questions. Um, one question is, this one is for Mr. Nye, and, and I'm just going to go through my few questions and then, you know, just share that you can answer them or however you can get back to me, whatever. Um, in reference to state aid, um, whether we had the COVID-19 or not, I just want to know, is the state aid ever subject to change? You know, are we waiting for, you know, the amount the the amount could change regardless if it was you know if we were in a pandemic or not and I know that just wanted to put that question out there um, and I think one of, I remember hearing one of the callers um, saying that we needed to have a reality check and um, I just want to make sure that um, to Dr. Guccio that some some people that may have called in they may need some clarification. Um, I just want to know if you want to call some of those people back um, because I'm concerned that they may um, they may feel the district doesn't have a plan A, B, C, or D in place for students returning. And I'm just trying to figure out, because um, I just don't want it to be put out to the community that there's no plan in place for our return um, after we are given clearance to come back to, um, to school um, after the pandemic. Because that one caller called in and said that, and I'm just concerned that we want to make sure that they have clarity on what the district is, how we're going to move forward to handle and support our, our students. Um, also, um, I just, one thing Ms. Bird did mention about the, having um, trust in our district. Um, I felt, I don't know if there's a lack of um, faith and that the district will have a plan. There's, I don't think there is a school district in this country with an administrative team that is not sitting down and planning for A, B, C, and D. And I can't foresee that A Carver Township is any different. When you're planning, when you're making a plan, you're, that's what you're doing. You're making a plan, you're creating one, and it's something you sit down and you work on. Um, so the plan may not be out in the forefront right now, but I just I just hope that Dr. Kusha, you know, maybe before the meeting's over, just to make sure that people understand that uh, A Carver Township is not sitting back just waiting for the unknown to happen. We're planning, I, I think that we're planning for A, B, C, and D. 
um, and some of the uh, board members mentioned that the people that were calling in were teachers. And I just wanted to make sure people understand that teachers in the summertime, teachers will not be getting paid as well. So they'll be without um, funds as well. So whether you're a teacher, whether you're um, an essential worker, whoever you are in the district, this pandemic and what situations going on now is affecting everyone. So there's no one that um, hasn't been affected in one way or the other. We don't know everyone's financial situation in the um, township. And I don't think that we can assume that if someone has a certain profession that, you know, we know their financial background. I think we need to be concerned with all stakeholders. And um, I just think that we need to um, really, as she, as Ms. Bird did say about not going with our fears, because we all have some type of fears with the situation that's going on now. But um, we do have to know, we have to know that when we make a decision, it's not about making history. It's just about um, investing in our, in the future of our students while considering everything that's going on. Thank you, Ms. Gilbert Floyd. Um, are there any other board members or do we want yeah. to circle yeah. administration? Yes. Okay. Go ahead, Mr. Uh, Ellis, please. Yeah, I would just like to say that, um, you know, it is some tough time, tough and rough time. I'm the only single parent on the board. And we say 25 cents and 40 cents is not enough, but yet we say community. We don't know what folks are going through out there. I know some waiters and waitresses that make two to $500 a week in tips. Now they're down to 25 and $50. I wish there was some kind of way we could kind of table this to the future. The future meaning seeing what the state's going to do for us. We don't know. I'm full of, always in favor of full day kindergarten because the educated community is the best community. But we also got to keep in mind, you know, a lot of us have pension, well, pension. A lot of us have two family incomes. A lot of us have good jobs paying over 100000 I heard earlier we say community, but yet we said 50% of our students is on free and reduced lunch. 50% of our students, $40, $80 may not mean a lot to us because we spend that in Wawa in a week. But for some parents, growing up in Atlantic City, growing up rough, $40 mean a lot. So we have to take into consideration what we're really saying. And if it's a possible way for us to table this to we guarantee our state aid, or maybe we could cut, we need to look in the budget, cut something else so full day kindergarten will survive. But don't ever say $40, $44, and $88 is nothing. Because 50% free and reduced lunch, that means a lot to other people. So I hope we keep that in mind and consider that. We got to think of others. Like we always say, the community. This is a community. You know what? We, we come strong together. We go through thick and thin in this community. So sometimes our brothers and sisters in the community is going to need help. And that help might come now. You you got to see out here where people are like fighting over toilet paper, you know, and, and, and people don't have money to take the kids to Wally World. Disney closed in 2021. Disney's probably make millions of dollars a month. And if they're concerned about what's going on, we got to keep in mind what's happening in our district. Not everybody had that 44 and $88. So let's look at the budget again, if we can, and go somewhere else besides the school. The uh, uh, full day kindergarten. Cut some other stuff if possible. I don't know. We'll go back into it. But I just want to say we take can't take for granted that that's nothing. We didn't get the taxpayers' relief on the pass through uh, monies that we got. You know, we gave them a little relief for a couple of times. But let's keep in mind all of us don't have that money. Thank you, Mr. Ellis. Do we have any other board members? <laughs> I do. Yes. Uh, go ahead. Uh, yes. Uh, Mr. Price, I'd like to comment, please. Yeah. Uh, let's hear everyone who hasn't spoke first, and then we'll double yeah. back if need be. Thank you. Uh, okay. It's Mr. Price. How, how are you tonight, everybody? Um, I just want to say that this is exactly why we need to support the budget. 
Now more than ever, people need us. The students need us, the parents need us, the community needs us. We can't provide these programs, these lunches and these services unless we continue in a responsible way and support the budget. Um, I understand that it's tough economic times for everyone, but we need a stable budget and we need to keep the schools going strong. It's the best things for the students. Let's support the budget. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Price. Uh, anyone, board member, uh, who hasn't spoken yet before we double back? Mr. President, I think that's me, <laughs> Lou Della Go Barca. Ahead. Go uh, ahead, Lou, please. I'm really in a turmoil here. That's why I've waited so long to make a comment. This has been a struggle for me. Uh, all of you know uh, that I have totally supported full day kindergarten uh, for over 55 years in education and um, 50 of those here in Lake Harbor Township. So. This is a real challenge because I totally sympathize with those folks who are struggling right now, uh, staying in my house all day for all these mugs, uh, six weeks now or seven weeks has been a real struggle. Uh, you know, all of us want to get out and associate with other people and hearing the concerns about the uh, folks who are not working, uh, not getting uh, unemployment, not getting the st uh, stimulus, uh, it really saddens me, but uh, <laughs> I'm struggling with this vote we need full day kindergarten. And uh, some of my friends might disagree with me regarding the vote, but at this time, I'm very disappointed in the state. I really think our state should have come to us and come to all the boards in the state. Instead, now's the time for you to continue the current budget, maintain what you're doing, and when we know what the funding will be, we'll let you know what to do. Instead of putting us on the spot, making us vote for a budget, and then we know all know come August, we're going to be looking at this again. I mean, they know that, the state knows it. I've been in contact to, we're at two meetings this past week as county president of the School Boards Association with the school board, New Jersey School Boards Association, and I get the some deep feeling from them, we're not going to get the funding that we've been promised. And that's sad, but I just get the sense that they know the state's going to run out of money. And even concerning the grant for the pre-K, if we get full day and that grant that been, sort of been promised us, will there be money for that grant? I'm a little worried about that also. Um, so all these worries, everybody that's spoken tonight on the board, I sincerely agree with all of you. There were 18 folks who called in tonight. And I think 16 of those were telling us to hold up on the budget and the rest of everybody uh, supported it. So that's kind of interesting. Uh, I know there are people out there who would like to have called in, but probably don't know the process, may not even know that we're meeting tonight, which is un unfortunate, but that's the way the uh, things go right now with the situation we're in. So at this time, it looks like I'm gonna be supporting the budget. I have a feeling we're gonna have the votes no matter which way I vote. Uh, and, uh, but we need it, we need our, not only for, as Mr. Price said, and many of you said, we need it for all of our programs. It's a shame we can't look at this again tonight and hold it up, but I have a feeling we have to move forward based on all the laws. And But we're gonna be talking budget, I have a deep, deep feeling, throughout the summer. And uh, who knows what revisions we're gonna make. But in order for us to open, in order for us to open in the fall, there's gonna be some changes made, and I don't know how we're gonna fund all that without supporting this at this time and then having to relook at everything in the future. So there we go, see what happens when we, when we vote. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Del Bark. And I, I'd like to uh, make my comments uh, before we go back around. And I, I wanna pick up on what you said. Um, the state has put us in a very difficult position because, uh, and let me be clear, as Chandra has said, uh, we may see our original aid numbers reduced and the state has until August 25th to do that. To do that, I certainly hope we would have an answer sooner. But that's a very real possibility, and all of the folks that I have spoken to in Trenton, as well, there there is an uncertainty as to what will happen. Um, however, the the Department of Education is telling us to move forward with our budgets as is, and here's why I believe we need to do so now. We were not, as, as, as Lou said uh, very correctly, we were not given an extension on our deadline to pass a budget. We have 
uh, until the 15th of May, long before we'll know anything from the state. So we have to act now. Passing this budget puts us in the best position to go forward with our plans that we had. Cutting now puts us behind the eight ball before we even know what the cuts are, should there be cuts. I know these are difficult times. They're unprecedented times. I understand both in terms of the pandemic and the, the economic hardship that's placed on our families. And it's heartbreaking. But I believe it's even more the reason that we have to do the best we can for our children. We have to make sure our students receive the best education we can give them. The budget that we have before us provides for the educational needs of those students, delivers full day kindergarten, the possibility of preschool. These are things our community has been planning for, not just for months, but for years. And it does these things in a fiscally responsible way. Again, assuming we were to get the aid by leveraging $6 million in state aid that we fought very hard for, and I fought very hard for personally, plus the possibility of an additional million dollars in grants for preschool, which completes our early childhood education. So we're, we would be in a position to offer all of that without having to go to referendum. Other communities that, that add a program like this full day kindergarten have to go to referendum. They have to build new buildings. They have to hire a lot of new staff. We've been able to do it without any of that. So assuming our aid stays, we're delivering these educational benefits in a very fiscally responsible manner. All we're asking for is to go to CAP. Uh, and again, we do have to have plans in place because we don't know what's going to happen. And we will have those plans in place if the aid does not come through. And we may very well be back here and we'll come back here and we'll do our jobs and we'll go from there and we'll make those plans when we have a different aid figure. But I think at this point in time, the responsible thing to do is to go forward with our budget as planned. And um, I'll now open up uh, if board members want to circle back. Um, I do have one more comment, Mr. Castellano. Yes, please. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to piggyback off of what Mr. Ellis said because I think that he made an excellent point that $44 to members of our community is um, might as well be $44,000. They're out of work and they don't know when they're going to go back. They don't know when their um, financial finances will be back on, on track. And those same community members are why we need to pass this budget. Uh, they need to work and they need somewhere for their children to go and they can't afford private kindergarten. They can't afford private preschool. So if they don't have anywhere to send their children to be educated in a safe place, then they cannot work and rebound in this terrible economy. So yes, $44 is difficult, but thankfully as a community, we're spreading out the burden and we're giving those kids who come from those homes a place to go and to be educated and a step up and a step out. So hopefully if something like this happens again in the future, that child will have more of a foundation to, to successfully navigate this situation. Thank you, Mr. Castellano. Thank you, Mrs. Bird. Any other board members, um, yes, other thoughts, other comments? Yes, I, I have a couple more questions. Um, when, when is the last day that we can 
vote on this budget? May 15th. May 15th? Ms. Anaya? The last day um, to submit to the township, is, um, excuse me, to the state is May 14th. Um, but this, but if anything is changed, nothing can change after tonight because this is our budget hearing. So although we may have more time, this is the official budget hearing. So this would have to be, um, you know, where all the decisions are made and then, you know, go from there. Okay, well, hopefully by then none of our residents are homeless because it's, it's just not good for a lot of people. And, and thank you, Mr. Ellis, for speaking for those people. Um, this really isn't just all about full day kindergarten. It's about our budget. And um, I've been asked, what is, what is the, um, the idea for the track and the, the turf? Are we including that in this budget? No? Is it going to be usable? Track and turf is not included in this budget. Um, that was something that we would discuss later. Um, it's not on our um, list of things right now. Um, the track did receive um, some rest and the turf did receive some rest this spring. So that's a good thing for us. Um, Dr. Grucia, this, this question is for you. If they do cut our $6 million or even a part of it, would, would you lower the budget or would you raise the amount of impact to the residents or to the taxpayers? Barb, that's hard for me to answer right now because it's a comprehensive uh, study of what the budget looks like uh, with those cuts, how much that cut, those cuts are, um, who that affects. And as you know, personnel is the um, uh, big potatoes of our budget. So um, just as all the time that went into preparing this budget, a whole lot of time, passion, and effort would have to go into um, that situation. But right now it's unknown um, if, if, if it will, will happen. And if it does, it's unknown just how much. Um, and the just how much um, really would assist us um, with looking at certain areas for those cuts. If I can just chime in um, regarding the um, burden to taxpayers, this budget being proposed is a budget presented at cap, um, which is the 2% cap we discussed. Um, if we are opening up our budget again to discuss things to cut or move around, um, I'm thinking if it follows regular budgetary guidelines, um, the only way um, we would be able to ever go above cap is with a separate question for the voters. But as it stands right now, cap is cap and that would not be impacted with the new with rethinking anything in August. But if, we, if the budget goes to cap and you have so much aid and you're getting 4.45 from the, the taxpayer, then you would have to put more to the taxpayer to bring it up to cap, I guess is what I'm saying. So cap is calculated based on last year's levy of about $79 million. You take last year's levy and you times it by you know 2%, and that is the only amount that you can increase um, outside of exceptions for health insurance and other things that um, are waived. Um, with that, 1.5 million is already in an increase in this budget, so you are already at the capped amount. So I, it's not the, like cap, the, cap, if, the cap calculation does not change if the budget changes. It's based on last year's levy. So last year's levy, 79 million, you would take 2% of that, and that does not change. And the, we, the did discuss, of, we did discuss money, this. Yeah. We did discuss that last week at our, our work meeting. It would not be possible for us to go higher than cap. I'm not talking about list. the budget going over cap. I'm talking about the amount of aid being reduced and that 4.45 cents to the taxpayer being increased because you lost that additional aid. The 4.45 cent increase you're discussing is the amount of the impact to the taxpayer because of the increase in the levy. So it is exactly tied together. The 4.45 cent increase is the amount of 
be increased because of the levy. So it is tied to that 2% number. Okay. If that helps. Well, um, I guess I've expressed my concerns as far as uh, when we get permission to go back to school and we pass full day kindergarten and then we're told that we only are going to have half day sessions. So some kids will go in the morning, some kids will go in the afternoon. And I'm talking about all grades, not just kindergarten. Um, then my concern came, became true. So um, that's kind of where I'm at. Okay. Ms. Mr. President? Yes. Um, yes, I please. Have, I just have a, um, some questions or concerns. Um, so if we don't get the funding, we is there a possibility that we could have to cut staff members? Is there a possibility that we will have to increase class size? I mean, are these all possibilities if we have to cut the budget in some way if we don't get the funding? And um, has it has it been confirmed? I mean, that we're going when we return back to school that we're going to do night sessions and half days for all. Di I just want to know where these since the, since people some people don't think I guess or think that the district has a plan in place for the kids to return in to re for when they return. I'm just trying to understand where all these all these different plans that are floating around in the community. I don't know where they're coming from. If um, as one of our callers said. Uh, a reality check and that um, we, we don't have a plan in place for when the children come back. I'm, I'm not sure who the, who that was, but that was one of the people I said, I think you may need to call them back because I don't know if we have, you know, I think there's a lot of ideas and thoughts and people have, there, people, you know, when people don't know exactly what's going to happen, the unknown, I think we have a lot of maybe false plans or thoughts about what's going to happen and what the school year is going to look like when we do return. So I just wanted to confirm, is, is, is it a half day for all grades? At this time, it is not a half day. We haven't even crossed that bridge. Again, we will wait for the governor's uh, statement on May 15th. We will take guidance from the, our Atlantic County um, educational officials. And um, we know that they'll be standing by our side as well as my other uh, superintendent, uh, the colleagues in the county. And we have discussions and we plan accordingly based on uh, what we can do. Yes, there's been many um, ideas uh, floating around in the educational arena, uh, but not Nothing, 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 absolutely nothing etched in stone at this time. We're not there yet. And I feel, I, I just, I'm just feeling that, that I, I feel like there may be the thought that people know a plan that there, I don't know where the plan, these plans are coming from. And I just also wanted to say that, um, you know, as a board member, um, I, I just wanted to say that, you know, I think every person on the board, I guess I'll just speak for myself, but I think that most people would say that we all, we're considering all stakeholders, whether you're parents, whether you're teachers, whether you're senior citizens, whether you're single, whether you're married, whether you're, you know, affluent or whether you, you know, you know, need um, financial assistance from um, wherever. It is, there's, there's not, this is affecting everyone. And I just don't want the com the community or stakeholders to think that we're only considering a certain sector of people in a Harbor Township. Um, we're considering everyone. And um, I just wanted to say that we're considering everyone the stakeholders. Thank you, Mrs. Gilbert Floyd. Are there any other board members? Yes, Mr. Castellano. Just to clarify something about all these ideas that are out there. It seems that the federal government I saw on TV today is recommending or pushing that when we open schools that we are moved desk far apart for uh, distancing and that the other point was that we feed the children in the classrooms. So that may be some of the talk that's out there because that has been on the news from the federal re uh, recommendations and guidelines. Certainly nothing has been said at the state level yet and I agree with Dr. Tricuccio that there's certainly been no decisions made that I've heard about at any time yet, but maybe some people are hearing some of that talk out there. Thank you. In the media. Thank you, Mr. Del Barca. Yes, very good points, but none of it that we know for certain. Are there any other board members that wish to comment on the budget before we move forward with the agenda? 
Okay, at, at this time, uh, this- Mr. Castellano, yeah. this is Chandra. We were waiting for um, the, vote, the board members to stop speaking. Um, if we can um, entertain the vote for a finance item um, for the budget at this time after the budget hearing. Um, it's item 7.1 if you want to if you're ready to entertain that and then we will flow through the rest of the budget excuse me the um, rest of the agenda i'm, I'm fine with, with that i just want to check with uh mrs Hauk elko do do i need to do 6.1 uh uh first comment on other parts of the agenda before we vote on the budget that's what i had planned to do but so because it's the public budget hearing, you just had your public budget hearing, you can certainly entertain the motion now for the budget if you want, because that's the only public comment you'd have. And then you could go into the next public comment for other agenda items. Okay, very good. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll, we will then, uh, we'll, we will change that order just a bit then. Um, and uh, at this point, I'm going to ask for a motion on 7.1 to approve the 2020-2021 school district budget. Do I have a motion, please? Motion. Second. Second. I have we a have motion. Go ahead. A motion and a second. We've had discussion. Is there any further discussion before we vote? Seeing none, roll call, please. Mr. Delabarca? I'm going to pass at this time. Mr. Ellis? No. Mrs. Gilbert Floyd? Yes. Mr. Price? Yes. Mrs. Sullivan? No. Mrs. Summer? Yes. Mrs. Salagi? No. Mrs. Bird? Yes. Mr. Castellano? Yes. And Mr. Della Barca? Yes. And motion passes, thank you. Thank you, board members. Thank you, members of the public. At this point in the agenda, we are going to open up for public comments, comments, excuse me, should there be any on the remainder of agenda items. The remainder of agenda items, not the budget, but the remainder of agenda items only, please. Any public comment? Again, with a 30 second delay, we're going to wait a few minutes and just make sure um, we get a chance to see it and call in. Okay, this has been on the screen at the for the viewers um, for 30 seconds on their end as well. So I think we can uh, go ahead and close. Okay, so we will move forward, and I, I thank uh, I thank everyone for that. We will go ahead into the uh, remainder of finance and operations, and I'm uh, going to now ask for a motion uh, for the remainder of finance operations, which is 7.2 through 7.11. May Mo I have a motion, please? Motion for Marita. May I have a second? I'll make a second. 
Any discussion on those items? Hearing roll call, please. Mr. Della Barca? Yes. Mr. Ellis? Yes, yes. Okay, thank you. Mrs. Gilbert Floyd? Yes. Mr. Price? Yes. Mrs. Sullivan? Yes. Mrs. Summer? Yes. Mrs. Salagi? Yes. Mrs. Bird? Yes. And Mr. Castellano? Yes. Thank you. Thank you all very much. We're going to move to personnel, and I'm going to ask for a motion on 8.1 through 8.3. May I have a motion, please? I'll make the motion. I'll second. I'm sorry, who made the motion? I didn't pick that up. Amy. Thank Mrs. you. Summer. Is there any discussion on personnel? Hearing none, roll call, please. Mr. Della Barca? Yes. Mr. Ellis? Technical difficult. Yes. I understand. <laughs> Mrs. Gilbert Floyd? Yes. Mr. Price? Yes. Mrs. Sullivan? Yes. Mrs. Summer? Yes. Mrs. Salagi? Yes. Mrs. Bird? Yes. And Mr. Castellano? Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. We have now new business. May I have a motion under 9.1 for 9.1, please? Uh, I have a question on that. Is that the time? Is now the time to ask it? What we'll do is we'll get a motion and second, and then we'll do discussion. I'll make a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second that. Okay, so now we'll move to discussion. Mr. Price. Okay, what I would like clarification on um, as far as suspending the policies, will these will this directly pertain to um, comply with emergency government orders on, on that level or could it be for any of the policies whatsoever? Could you just clarify that a little bit better for me? Thank you. Yes, it would cover anything that would go with the emergency orders as well as any policies that are affected by the emergency orders, new laws, et cetera, while school is closed and only for that limited time period. Okay, so it would be pertaining to emergency orders. It wouldn't be just daily operations or anything like that sort. It would if it pertained, if there were any policies that pertain to daily operations that were affected because of an emergency order, an executive order by the governor or because of a law that was changed during uh, the COVID-19 pandemic um, that we haven't had a chance to um, modify a policy for. Okay, thank you. That sounds reasonable. Any, any further discussion on 9.1? Uh, hearing none, may we have a roll call, please? Mr. Della Barca? Yes. Mr. Ellis? Yes. Mrs. Yes. Gilbert Floyd? Yes. Mr. Price? Yes. Thank you. Mrs. Sullivan? No. Mrs. Summer? Yes. Mrs. Salagi? Yes. Mrs. Bird? Yes. Mr. Castellano? Yes. Thank you. We do have an item uh, under old business dealing with HIV and uh, discipline hearings. And I'm going to ask Mrs. Elko if she has the uh, resolution to read for us. I do. I would ask the board to entertain a motion to affirm the HIV cases and the disciplinary hearing cases as discussed in executive session. Specifically, they are JDM03, JDM04, F09, 
DHS01, and then DH4, DH5, and DH6, all 1920 as discussed in executive session. You would need a motion and a second. Thank you, Mrs. Elko. May I have a motion, please? Lou Della so made. Second. second. Mrs. Sullivan. Any discussion? Any discussion? Hearing none, may I have roll call? Mr. Della Barca? Yes. Mr. Ellis? Abstain. Mrs. Gilbert Floyd? Yes. Mr. Price? Yes. Mrs. Sullivan? Yes. Mrs. Summer? Yes. Mrs. Salagi? Yes. Mrs. Bird? Yes. Mr. Castellano? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, board members. Uh, our final agenda item is uh, one more pu public comment period, uh, which can be on any topic uh, for the public. Uh, questions or comments, again, they're limited to three minutes. Uh, the board cannot discuss personnel or litigation. And should you have a complicated question, it may be necessary for uh, our administration to get back to you with an answer. So with that, we're open uh, one more time for public question or comment on any topic. We will leave it open for one minute because of the delay. At this time, we have not received any calls, and we are just up on the one-minute mark. Okay, thank you. We'll close that. Um, and at this point, oh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Castellano, the phone is ringing right now, so I think you should have answered. Sure. Okay, please repeat name and address, please. Dana Dan, 4023 Fernwood Avenue. Um, first, I want to say good job on the virtual board meetings. Um, I know that it's trying times and you guys are doing great with it. Um, next, I just want to say thank you to the teachers and counselors, especially at the high school, for making virtual learning less stressful um, for a junior who's researching colleges and seniors who are making their decisions. I want to also give a shout out to the class of 2020 and let them know that their community is behind them and everything that we're doing. Um, and finally, I want to thank Dr. Gruccio, the district, um, the township, the mayor's wellness campaign, recreation for bringing the hashtag EHC strong to EHC this Friday. Um, May 1st, we're asking the community to get involved and decorate their homes, yards, businesses with EHT gear to show our solidarity, not just for our residents, but for our students. Uh, I just want to let everybody know that they can upload the pictures to the Facebook event, hashtag EHT strong, or they can email them to me at recreation and the information is on that event page. I also want to give a special thanks out to Leanna Mullen and Denisina from the high school for helping us put the video together. With that being said, um, if you guys can help spread the word, I just want to put out there that we're all in this together. We are one. We are EHT. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much for, for your comment, Dina, and, and we certainly are going to do our part to support that effort. Um, that's it's a wonderful idea. And we are all in this together, and I agree with you 100%. And so thank you again. 
And we do have another public comment. Name and address, please. Kathy Watson. Go ahead with your public comment. Wow. Thank you, Board of Education. It, this has been a long time coming, and I and I realized that it was a hard decision tonight, uh, but you did the right thing. I thank you. I'm sure our community thanks you, and um, can't wait to get next year going. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mrs. Wazen, for your comment. Any other members of the public? We did just get an attempt, um, but they did not say anything, so we will wait another 30 seconds in case there was a difficulty there. Okay, you're live. Name and address, please. Good evening, Sonia Cruz, 207 Egan Avenue. Go ahead with your public comment. Um, uh, Mr. Castellano, I wanted to go on record um, in regards to a suggestion that I had made directly to you to share with the uh, Board of Education in regards to showing additional support to the senior class of Ed Howard Township High School by providing a yearbook for each senior, so that possibly is a school. Okay. Are you still there? Yes, I'm still here. Go ahead. After the word school, we didn't hear anything after that. Sorry, do you want to repeat that sentence? Oh, he lost me there. So, <laughs> I'm sorry. So, the question. Sonia Cruz, 207 Egan Avenue at Harvard Township. Go ahead. Um, Mr. Cosmano, hi, good evening. Um, I am trying to make a formal request to the email that I sent you that I asked for you to please share with the other Board of Education members in regards to a suggestion of being able to show additional support to the senior class at Bank Harvard Township High School by providing a yearbook to each student so that in the efforts that school is we can classmates yes okay thank you good Yes, thank you, Sonia, very much. Um, it's a wonderful suggestion. I did share that with the board. Uh, I think what we're prepared to say at this point is we are certainly interested uh, and are actively looking at what we can do for our seniors, our eighth graders as well. Um, so that's a wonderful idea. Uh, and. Um, we are going to look at that as uh, sort of in, in totality with all the things that we may be able to do, uh, especially for our seniors. We hear you, 
um, and we appreciate that and that's a great idea and we're going to take a look at that along with other things. Any other public comment at this point? There wasn't a call during her call, but we will wait another 30 seconds. Very good. Okay, um, this has been on the screen now for them about 10 seconds. Well, I guess we'll wait just a few more just in case they want to call in. I think you're safe to go, Mr. President. Thank you very much. Thanks to members of the public who commented uh, this evening, I know we had a we had a long evening. We had several comment periods. We had a lot of important business. Um, so at this point, I'll I'll uh, ask if uh, board members, any board members, have uh, final thoughts and comments. Mr. Castellano, Mr. Sullivan. Yes, please. Uh, I just want to really thank um, everybody that works works in the district. We have the most innovative teachers. I have two children that are homeschooling here in my home each day. They're they're doing just really fantastic. I also want to give a shout out to the cafeteria workers. They've provided more than ten thousand meals, which is an astronomical amount if you think about it. Um, our our facility people are just keeping our our facilities up to to snuff and the grounds look beautiful. And also to all of our administrators, I know sometimes we don't always agree on things, but I think you're the best. Thanks. Hello? Uh, hello? Go ahead. Go ahead, Mr. Ellis. <laughs> yeah, I would like to, first of all, thank Mrs. Cruz for bringing up that excellent idea. People have to think about what the kids are going through. How in the world can you justify and, and say you, you lived a life of no project graduation, which I think is the best thing they uh, could ever do the whole year. I like that better than graduation. These kids now gonna have a senior prom, project graduation, uh, graduation, hopefully things will be straight by then, but I doubt it. So thank you, Mrs. Cruz for bringing that up. Excellent idea. Also, I heard some people took a little slack from the lights on. I rode past three nights, you know, and it was great. The kids was in cars, not, you know, one at a time. They went past. We got to do something. None of us ever experienced anything like this. I mean, these kids are losing it, you know, and staying in the house, you're going to start fighting with your brothers and sisters or staying in the house. You just want to get out. And this is really terrible. Anything we could do for these kids, we got to do it. I don't think there should be a vote on it. I think we need to find money at least show our appreciation to the kids and give them their yearbook. Do something extra special for these kids because no one on this earth, unless you're probably 102 years old, can say they experience what we're going through now. So thanks, Mrs. Cruz, for bringing that up. Let's give these kids those yearbooks. Mr. President? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ellis. I agree. Go um, ahead, Mrs. Gilbert Floyd. Um, I just want to say that... Um, and here I am speaking for myself, but I'm I'm going to say it because I think that all of our board members feel the same way. Um, I think there'll always be a special affection for the class of 2020 because of what they experienced. And um, I do agree with Mr. Ellis in the sense of the fact that we need to come up with um, multiple ways to um, support the class of 2020, let them know that we, you know, we feel their pain and like this is something that like you said we've never experienced before and also our eighth grade students i know we don't do an eighth grade graduation but we do have an eighth grade eighth grade dance and um 
festivities. So I think when we say class of 2020, we need to make sure that we're also inclusive of our eighth grade students, our seniors. Um, and you may say, oh, well, eighth graders, they'll get a high school graduation, you know, and I'm sure, you know, I pray that they do. Um, but just remember everyone who are having milestones in their life this year. But I would like to say that um, I think this is a question that the board needs, you know, I would like to do something extra special for the seniors, whether it's, of, you know, the yearbooks, whether it's the video presentation, um, what have you. But we also, um, fiscally speaking, we have to look at something that um, I think of the yearbook is a nice memory token for them to have, but we just want to make sure we can look at other things we can do as well um, to support them. And I like to kind of put the question more so back to Dr. Gruscio because um, I, I, I do know this, when you want to surprise um, students or you have something special planned for them that you wanted to kind of be a surprise, sometimes you may not share everything that you're going to do um, out there to make it kind of special. Um, so I just want to say, you know, is there any part of the plan that you, that the district already has in place that, that you could share tonight? Because I think that some people are under the impression that there's nothing being planned or there's, you know, what are we doing? What about our seniors? Did we forget? Um, I did put a post on Facebook and say, you know, I know that our seniors and our eighth graders will be celebrated. And I don't think we have a district that takes care of 7,400 students each year is sitting around just, you know, with their, you know, scratching their heads like, oh, what are we gonna do? I think that there's planning in place and um, you know at least tentative plans. So would you be able to speak to that tonight at all? I can speak to some of it, Tamika. Uh, quite honestly, um, I know um, that planning has taken place. I tasked mm -hmm. our administrators, uh, particular principals, to meet with their assistant principals and come up with ideas. Um, I personally have been involved in, in budgeting and preparing for this meeting. Uh, Mr. Santilli and I have meetings lined up tomorrow, as a matter of fact, to speak with principals to hear uh, what their research has um, brought to them and, and after they've uh, collaborated with their, their uh, colleagues, um, as well as put out surveys. The, um, the, the high school put out a survey to the seniors and asked them some questions. So I felt it was important to hear from the kids. I didn't want to decide on a date or, or an event or, you know, without their input, because as Mr. Ellis said, this is a time like no other for a, a senior in high school. And we want them to be able to at least have a little bit of a say. That'll lead our uh, planning into a certain direction, as well as the May 15th statement by the governor. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, if he says come back, hopefully, you know, he, he gives us guidelines as to how you sit, who you're near, what you wear, and all that. Um, and then we can surely plan from there. But I don't want to think, I don't want anybody to think we're hiding anything from them. We're mm -hmm. not. Um, there are ideas and great ideas being tossed around. We met with Justin's Renaissance. Um, Ms. Connor, the high school principal and one of her VPs, um, and myself were on that call along with a whole nation full of uh, school leaders. And um, Justin's presented ideas to us and they started off with small schools, you could do X, Y, Z. And then when they got to the large schools, you could do X, Y, Z, but you're gonna have to get creative in what you do because we understand you're so large. And as you know, we're in that category, that large category. So um, some of the ideas of, you know, the people have of, of parades and movie theaters and, you know, we're gonna have to get creative with all that. 64 square miles of Egg Harbor Township, um, it's quite large. I'm game, but we have to get um, a definite plan based on the information we have to work with. So again, a lot of unknowns, but I don't want anybody to think that we don't have um, this on our on our agenda to review. Again, we meet tomorrow, and I, I believe one of our meetings is about National Honor Society, uh, eighth grade awards. So we, we have these little go meets with our principals, and we hear their ideas, and we brainstorm as to how we're going to do it and how we're going to roll it out. So have faith that we are we are talking and we are planning, but nothing's definite because we don't have definite guidance right now. But we'll have, we have those plans for you. We will. Thank you, Dr. Grisha. I just and I wasn't trying to you know put you on the spot, but I just I just think that the public needs to hear that. I think the parents of seniors need to hear that. I think they need to you know um, just hear that and see it and know that it's being talked about and that it's you know it's definitely in the plan and class of 2020, you know, will not be forgotten. And I just want to say that putting out the survey to the high school seniors, um, that was perfect because a lot of times we do, we plan for, for children and it's not really what they want. So I think having that input from the seniors was excellent. Thank you. 
Can I ask a follow-up mm -hmm. question um, to that, Dr. Guccio? Sure. Um, I know that you put a, a survey out for the seniors. Did I also hear correctly that a survey was going out for the eighth graders as well? I did uh, suggest that to the middle school principals. Um, I'll get that follow-up information tomorrow. I know it, we didn't want to lay on top of the, the seniors because we have a lot of you know calls going out and we have a lot of social media blasts going out. So uh, they may be looking to do that um, this week. Um, but I know the senior one went out and it just wasn't a phone call with the senior one um, because um, of our system. We went through the um, senior English teachers. So the English teachers, you know, um, relayed that sur survey to their students. So it takes a little longer that way. So we're, we're, we're going to, I know the results were compiled today. I believe the high school met with students today. So we'll have more answers tomorrow. They kind of know to stay away from me on Tuesdays. So. Thank you. <laughs> Very good. Mr. Castellano. Yes. Uh, just one more comment. Uh, you, uh, to make a jump ahead a little bit on the, I was going to bring up the survey idea also. So I'm very pleased to hear about the survey. Uh, Dr. Guccio mentioned it at our last meeting that that was going to happen. And I'm really anxious to hear the results. I think it would be great to hear from the kids and how, hear what they say and their ideas. Um, I want to thank that in general, of course, like everybody is, the administrators and especially our teachers and the entire staff for what they've done for our students. But you know what I want to do tonight? I want to thank you, or my fellow board members. Each of you have great opinions and ideas and thoughts, and you've all worked so hard and struggled with the decision we had to make tonight. And I think it was the great respect that we gave each person. Mr. Castellano, you let everybody talk, uh, as we always do. And we tried to hear everybody. And I think the comments that were made were on point. Uh, I know everybody wants full day kindergarten. Uh, that all of us are concerned about our community. And I think it's great that we did come together. We had a majority vote and that decision has been made. Now we have to look forward to this great decision that's gonna be made coming on May 15th and then how the financial decisions are gonna be made over the course of the summer. Uh, so thank you all of you and thank all of our administrators and our, our great uh, Ava Arbor Township school system. And you know, Mrs. Cruz's ideas is really great to be able to provide those seniors with something like that. At least they'll get it and maybe we'll have an opportunity to get signatures sometime before uh, we lose them all together. Uh, and I think they, they deserve their recognition, and I know certainly the eighth graders do also. This is something all of us, and I know those kids 30 years from now, 50 years from now, are going to say that wonderful year of 2020 and what they missed. And I know all of you are saying, I thought Mr. Della Barca was here 102 years ago when the last time we experienced this. But guess what? I missed it by a few years. So thank you all very much, and uh, I look forward to our next meeting and seeing you all again. Thank you, Mr. Della Barca. Very well said. Um, I there there isn't anything I can add. Are there any other anyone else, please? Yes. Yeah, Mr. Castellano, I just have a comment. I had uh, Mrs. Salagi first, and then and then uh, uh, Mr. Price. Okay, I'll stand by. Thank you. Uh, first, I, I I do want to thank our whole family in the school district here because. It, I know it's been a lot more work than everybody being in school and even to the parents, the parents that never expected to be a teacher's helper and, and to do this through all different programs that they don't even know about. But um, it's been a great thing for the kids, I know. Um, you spoke about Mrs. Cruz and what she's done for our students. Uh, I just want everybody to know that Project Graduation is still planning uh, for our seniors and we want to collaborate with the district and um, we raised money for them and we plan on spending this money on them. So um, we're there and we have our own plans to make and we'll have plan A, plan B, plan C too, um, depending on where we are and what's going on. So, But I wanted everybody to know that we are still planning on that for them. Thank you, Mr. Salagi. Mr. Price. Okay, thank you. There's a little bit of a lag in the uh, process here. Um, I would just like to say that um, we need to keep the great ideas coming. Keep the great ideas coming for 
our seniors and the eighth grade uh, class. Um, there's a lot of ideas that are out there, a lot of ideas that are out there, and uh, keep them coming. I love Miss Cruz's idea with the yearbooks. I think that's a great idea, and um, let's let's keep them coming, and um, hopefully we can implement most of them. And um, again, I just wanted to say thank you to everybody tonight. I know it was a long meeting. Mm -hmm. And um, looking forward to next month. Everybody stay safe and well, and um, good night. Mr. Castellano, I have, I have one last comment. Um, I just would like to say that, you know, I think that if we do have a parade for the um, this class of 2020 in the, um, you know, in a Carpet Township, I do want to vote that we have Miss Sonia Cruz be the marshal for the parade, <laughs> along with the maybe the class president, senior class president. Um, I just want to put that out there, Ms. Cruz. You know, I think she'd be a great marshal for the, she would be a great citizen marshal and then have a student marshal. That's all. That's perfect. I love it. Any, any, uh, any board members who haven't spoken that wish to uh, say uh, any questions, comments, thoughts before we wrap up? Any other board members? All right, I'm hearing and seeing none. Uh, so I'm just gonna again, uh, before we adjourn, you know, I'm going to um, end where I began, thanking our faculty and staff so very much for the hard work and the dedication that you're putting in every single day. Our students are learning. That's so important during these times. We're feeding our students and we're supporting them. And I also want to echo Mr. Della Barca and thank the Board of Education for working very hard as we led up to this evening and this evening to put this budget together. We worked hard, everyone expressed their opinion, and we did the best we could under very difficult circumstances. Uh, there are times in life when you simply have to play the cards that you're dealt and do the best that you can. And I think we're all doing the best we can in many aspects of our life and this is no exception. Uh, so I'm going to uh, wish everyone a good evening, ask that everyone please stay safe and healthy. Thank you all again and I'm going to ask for a motion to adjourn. Mr. Castellano, may I just uh, make a statement? Oh, absolutely. Sure. I just want to uh, say thank you on behalf of administration, central administration. Thank you to the Board of Education for your support of this budget. Um, I realize it was difficult um, and, and, you know, if people had questions and rightfully so, and I respect that, but I thank you for your support and just please have the confidence in us that we will embrace the situation and, and anything that comes our way. Um, and as you know, we're going to engage in whatever we need to engage in and whenever we have to do so, all for the best interest of educating our, our students. Um, and I, I feel strongly about that. Um, we are EHT strong. Um, we will get through this together. And as, as long as we are that team um, and we support each other and we're here for the kids, uh, we're going to be okay. So thank you and good night. Thank you, Dr. Gruccio, very much for that. And uh, is are there any other comments um, before I ask for a motion to adjourn? May I have that motion, please? Motion. Second. Second. Acclamation. Good night, all. Good night, all. Good night. We are adjourned.